How to properly measure blood pressure. Five steps. Do you know what the number one single reversible risk for death is on our planet? It's increased blood pressure. Increased blood pressure is the number one single health risk that causes the greatest loss of life from conditions like heart disease and stroke. The good news is that increased blood pressure is reversible. Just imagine how many lives could be saved if people knew they had high blood pressure and received treatment to lower it. That's why properly measuring blood pressure is really important. We need to measure blood pressure properly so we can trust that the readings we get are accurate. If we don't measure blood pressure properly, we could get inaccurate, misleading readings. Inaccurate or misleading readings don't help anyone. Inaccurate or misleading readings can lead us down the wrong path. It can cause us to miss people that actually need treatment or to give treatment to the wrong people or give too much treatment to people. Sadly, this happens a lot. A lot of people measure blood pressure incorrectly, and this can cause up to 50% of blood pressure readings to be mislabeled as normal when they aren't actually normal, or as hypertensive when they aren't actually hypertensive. Properly measuring blood pressure will empower us to help as many people as possible. Let's learn how to properly measure blood pressure. Step one. The first step in measuring blood pressure is selecting a validated, semi-automated, or a fully automated device. You can find more information on how to select a validated device by visiting this website. Working groups recommend the use of automated blood pressure devices that have been independently validated and use an upper arm cuff whenever possible. With a semi-automatic device, you must squeeze the bulb on the blood pressure cuff. The device will do the cuff deflation and assessment of the blood pressure reading. These devices need to be purchased along with different cuff sizes. Fully automatic devices are easier to use and unlike semi-automated devices, they will self-inflate. Some also have a rigid cuff that accounts for differences in arm sizes. However, these devices are more expensive. Some other devices are designed to measure and average several readings without another person present. These devices are recommended if they pass validation standards, but are also more expensive. Step two, the next step is choosing the right cuff size for the person being measured. Most cuff sizes come in small, medium, and large. Select what you believe is most appropriate. There are markers on each cuff to help guide you. When wrapping a cuff around a person's arm, if the outside edge falls outside the markers, you have the wrong sized cuff. If a person's arm looks like it falls in between two cuff sizes, use the larger cuff. Step three, the next step is to ensure the person is prepared for having their blood pressure measured. Sometimes people can be suffering from pain, anxiety, or stress. Pain, anxiety, or stress elevates blood pressure. If the blood pressure readings are found to be high, the readings should be repeated later unless there is a hypertensive emergency. The person should not smoke before a blood pressure reading. Blood pressure increases for a short time after smoking, chewing tobacco, or consuming food or drinks containing caffeine, such as coffee or tea. The blood pressure usually comes back down again in 30 minutes. The person getting their blood pressure measured should be resting comfortably in a sitting position for five minutes immediately before the measurement. They should not be talking. The person doing the measurement should also not be talking. A person needs to be in a comfortable environment that is not too hot or too cold or too stimulating. 
The person should be seated with back support. The arm should be bare or have a very thin sleeve and supported with a blood pressure cuff at the level of the heart. The crease of the elbow must be aligned with the bottom of the heart, called the apex, with the cuff centered to align with the center of the heart. If the arm is too low, use a pillow or a cushion to support the arm on the table to ensure that the arm is at heart level. Alternatively, if the arm is too high, you may need to place a pillow on the chair to elevate the person having their blood pressure measured. The legs should not be crossed. Both feet should be flat on the floor. The person can also be positioned to the side of the table to ensure that they are positioned properly. If the back and arm are not supported properly, if the arm is too low or the legs are crossed, the blood pressure will increase and you will get incorrect readings. Measure blood pressure on a bare arm or through a shirt with a thin sleeve. Place the blood pressure cuff on the arm with the artery marking on the inside of the arm over the brachial artery. Then wrap the cuff. The cuff should not be too tight or too loose. A couple of fingers should be able to fit snugly under the cuff. Support the arm so that the middle of the cuff is at heart level. Step four. Now you are ready to measure the person's blood pressure. If you are using an automatic device, turn the device on and push the button and wait for the blood pressure reading to appear. If you are using a semi-automatic device, rapidly inflate the cuff with the bulb, making sure to inflate to a level where you can no longer feel the pulse. The pulse can be felt just above the thumb in the radial artery, which is a branch of the brachial artery. As the cuff inflates above the pressure of the brachial artery, you will lose the pulse. When you lose the pulse, you can stop inflating the cuff. The person should sit quietly while the reading is in progress. There should be no talking during the measurement. Write down the measurement. If this is the very first time the person is having their blood pressure measured, measure blood pressure in the other arm. Write down the measurement for the other arm. Blood pressure should be taken in both arms on at least one visit, and if one arm has a consistently higher pressure, the arm with the higher readings should always be used for blood pressure measurement and interpretation. Once you know which arm has the higher blood pressure, wait at least one full minute and take a second measurement from that arm and record that reading as well. Then wait another minute and take a third reading. Remember to write down all your measurements so that you won't forget them. In total, on the very first visit, you will have measured the person's blood pressure four times, once in each arm and three times in the arm with the higher readings. All people should have their blood pressure measured properly in this way. However, there is one important exception. People with a highly irregular heartbeat, such as atrial fibrillation, will be difficult to measure in this way. People with atrial fibrillation are an important exception because they will require extra readings. Sometimes it might even be necessary to auscultate their blood pressure instead of or in addition to using an automated oscillometric blood pressure device. Step 5. Now that you have finished measuring the person's blood pressure, be sure to write down all the information you have collected. Record the blood pressure. At least two measurements should be taken in the same arm with the person in the same position and averaged. If the first reading is much higher than the second, the first reading should be discarded and the second and third readings should be averaged. Record the arm used, the cuff size, and the heart rate. Record date, age, gender, and any use of antihypertensive drugs. Now that you've reviewed this video, let's summarize the steps involved in properly measuring blood pressure. Five steps to properly measuring blood pressure. Step one, select a validated automated device. Visit this website to find devices that have passed international standards. Step two, 
select the right cuff size. Most of the time, you will be choosing between small, medium, and large cuffs. When wrapping the cuff around a person, you must use the markers on the cuff to help you decide if the cuff is a good fit. Step 3. Prepare the person for blood pressure measurement. Remember that people who are anxious, stressed, or in pain will have falsely high blood pressure. You will need to repeat their blood pressure at a different time when they are calm and pain-free. The person should not smoke before blood pressure reading. The person should be sitting comfortably in a comfortable, quiet environment. Their back should be supported and both feet should be flat on the floor. The arm should be bare and supported with the blood pressure cuff at the level of the heart. The artery marking on the cuff should be placed on the inside of the arm in alignment with the brachial artery. The cuff should be wrapped so that it is not too tight and not too loose, but with just enough space to slide two fingers underneath it. Step 4. Measure the blood pressure. There should be no talking while the blood pressure is being measured. You will need to inflate the cuff by squeezing the bulb on the semi-automated devices. Stop inflating when you can no longer feel the pulse. You will need to take a total of four measurements, one in each arm and three in the arm with the highest pressures. Make sure to write the numbers down each time so that you don't forget them. Step five, record your results. You'll take an average of the final two readings and also note the arm used, cuff size, heart rate, age, gender, and use of any antihypertensive drugs. Congratulations! Now you're ready to measure a person's blood pressure.